We're here at the Georgia State Capitol. I thought that this would be an appropriate setting for our conversation about civil liberties. They're more than what you may think they are. As you read your book, you're gonna see things about the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, all the way to the Tenth Amendment, talking about the Bill of Rights. But today we're gonna to go a little bit further. We're gonna to talk to some of your neighbors and see what they know about their civil liberties. So we've heard the term before, civil liberties, right? Right. What is civil liberties? What, what, what is a civil liberty? Just guess then. It's okay. all right to guess. Um, I would say the free, like... What, what about you? What do you think? It's all right, but you were close. You said free. The freedom, because liberty is exactly. freedom. Civil is like... Here. People. People. Right. So your personal freedom. Exactly. Oh, okay. So you actually had a lot of people understand what civil liberties are because they live them every day. But sometimes, you know, putting the words together isn't that isn't that easy. All right. So what are some of your civil liberties? You're an American, right? What are some of your civil liberties? To walk around. To walk around. Say what you want. Say what you want. Eat what you want. Eat what you want. Can you eat what you want? Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you've heard of the First Amendment. Yeah. Yes. What's the First Amendment? Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. Uh -huh. Anything else? Freedom of assembly. Freedom of assembly. Freedom of protest. The ability to protest. Yes. Freedom of assembly. Religion. Freedom of religion. And there's one more. I'm ready for a big high five. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, the freedom to petition the government. The freedom to petition the government. Because if, the, if you're mad at the government, you can always petition it. You can complain and things of that nature. So y'all actually know a lot about civil liberties because you live them every day. Thank you so much. One of our fundamental freedoms is the freedom of religion. We can practice whatever religion we want in the United States as long as the practices don't hurt yourself and don't hurt other people. In the United States, we have two clauses that I really want you to understand. It's the free exercise clause, what we just talked about, your freedom to exercise your religious rights in any way you see fit, and of course, the establishment clause. The establishment clause prohibits the United States or the state government from making any state religion. Whether it's one person or a hundred, if you're following the laws of the state and you're filling out the cor correct and appropriate paperwork, you have the freedom to assemble. This is a public street that I'm on, therefore I have the freedom and the right to be here if I need to be or want to be. Of course we just don't have the First Amendment, we also have the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment, your right to bear arms, is somewhat controversial because of course it takes interpretation by the judicial uh, branch. So. It's right now in the United States, should you have the right to have a gun right now if you want to? If you do, what kind of gun should you have? Should I be able to put a 50 cal on the back of my truck? It's up to your interpretation of what you think bearing arms should be. Though we don't use it like we did in the late 1700s, it's very important that we remember the Quartering Amendment. The Quartering Amendment prohibits troops from being in your house during times of peace or war without your permission or without the act of law. Now, of course, when we're talking about the colonial days, and you remember from chapter one, British troops routinely went into your house and said, scoot over, we're going to eat dinner tonight, and you're going to take care of me, because that's what they had the power to do. Because of the Third Amendment, that's nothing we have to worry about anymore. And another one of the civil liberties that you're probably used to is the right of having a fair trial, due process. You're going to see that in a lot of the amendments that we speak about, well, especially due process, okay? Because when you think about it, what is due process? Well, due means something that's owed to you, and a process is a systematic way of doing things. So you're owed a systematic way of doing things when you're in any uh, legal problems, any criminal problems, or anything dealing with justice in general. What about you? Do you know about civil liberties? What's your civil liberties? 
Oh, you're the quiet type. So you know you have the right to not talk if you don't have to talk. Oh, you do. See, that's what I'm saying. Uh -huh. So people, they just pet your nose all day? Somebody, somebody pet me. Okay. So you don't care about civil liberties. You're just going to turn your head on me? He, ah, uh, oh, he, he, he woke up again. He remembers that he has civil liberties too, I guess. Is he an American? He, he's an American. It's cool. On September the 11th, 2001, I was at the Great Savannah State University. I remember leaving my math class and I stood there at Boston Hall and I was wondering why everyone, why everyone was by the television. We got news that two airplanes hit the World Trade Center in New York. My question to you is simply this. Would you give up any of your civil liberties to protect your safety? Some people say that if you would give up any civil liberty, you give up safety in its essence because now you're not safe from the government. But some people say, why be safe from the government if I'm fearful that my life is in danger at any time? This is a serious question because this is something that we're living now. Do you, would you give up your civil liberties for safety? All right, of course, we're talking about civil liberties and civil rights and, of course, safety. Now, 9-11, uh, the anniversary is coming up pretty soon. Um, it's this month, uh, in fact. What do you think? Do you think that anybody should give up their civil liberties, their freedoms, uh, freedom of privacy or any of that to keep themselves safe? Or do you think safety is number one? Well, it depends how much you want to give up. I mean, uh -huh. you can't really say you want to give up everything or not. Uh -huh. I mean, I think there's got to be a thin line, but you know, you probably have to give up some of it. Is there something in general that you would just not give up? Sure. For example, like this uh, scandal when it's happened in London, I don't want somebody to check my phone. You oh, know, the this tablet. is too much. Uh -huh. You know, this is too much already. But yeah, like I kind of like agree already that it's like people checking my traveling uh -huh. and they checking me. Do you think that the president should have the ability to turn off the internet if there's a credible threat that if people are using the internet that could hurt us? Do you think that the White House should have the power to turn it off for the whole country? For the whole country? Yeah. Oh, no, definitely Probably not. not. Probably not? Okay. Well, hey, thank you all for your help, okay? Yeah, you're welcome. Let's Of course, with 9-11, we have to thank the people who came to the rescue first. The first responders and the firefighters of the city of New York, we thank you for what you've done.